All right, so here's what you missed. I've already primed all of the assemblies for the horizontal stabilizer. I did all that off camera so I don't get to overspray on the camera itself. And I finished marking up all the holes that are called out in the plans to not rivet here on the rear spar assembly. And then I've gone ahead and riveted all of the uh, pieces. Sorry, I've clicked all the pieces together. So now I'm going to go ahead and review the plans, determine the correct rivet sizes, and we'll get started with final assembly for the rear spar. Alright guys, welcome back to Project Life Goals Season 1, Episode 12. We're working on assembling the horizontal stabilizer. Right now I'm on the rear assembly. We're doing the riveting for the spars and the doublers. This video is going to be a little bit shorter today as there was not as many work hours that went into getting to this step, but I wanted to go ahead and get this video out to you now since I will be starting on another component, but more on that later. The riveting process for the rear spar assembly is much like that for the vertical stabilizer rear spar assembly, it just takes a little bit longer due to all the the sheer number of rivets that you have to drive or squeeze in this case. A few more extra holes that you gotta dance around if you will. Uh, just mark those out ahead of time. Uh, I used blue painters tape and then marked what the hole actually was. That came in handy uh, a little bit later having spent that time to know exactly which ones the hinges go to and which ones were the ribs. So after I got the pneumatics rivet squeezer dialed in, checked a few rivets, it was uh, mostly set and forget. So we uh, just keep going through them. I was using the longer on uh, squeezer yoke here just because it was much easier to get around the flange of the spar. You probably could have gotten away with just a normal uh, three inch yoke. Um, but I didn't even attempt it, I just went straight to the long run. It uh, seemed to be a, a better choice just for making things easy. Yes, I've been enjoying the fact that the pneumatic squeezer is foot operated primarily. You can feather it, though it definitely does take some, some practice in getting used to. Um, it's not a, a linear throw on it depending upon how much you press that that pedal down just a, a slight amount of pedal to start getting the uh, that center pin to start moving is enough to keep it moving all to the, all the way to the rivet uh, those of you that have experience with TIG welding might find the use of the pedal a bit easier than someone who doesn't have TIG welding experience uh, I don't have much but I'm sure what little amount that I do have is, is helping with the use of the pneumatic squeezer <laughs> Well, that completes the first round of riveting. Now I can take out all the Clecos. I'm gonna leave some of them near the, the hinge points where you have to mark off a few extra holes so I can keep even pressure across the uh, spar doubler in the spar. Uh, but making good progress. It's quite, uh, quite enjoyable to be finally riveting. A lot of prep work before you get to this point. Just for kicks, I did a little bit of math since I'm keeping track uh, of every operation that I'm doing during the steps, uh, at least at a high level. The riveting up to this point on my project has made up less than 10% of the build time for the project. Now, mind you, I have not done any riveting of the components to the skins, so that will inevitably help drive that number up, but you definitely spent a lot more time on all of the other processes, match drilling, deburring, etc. One of the things that I'm fairly confident I haven't mentioned to this point, and remember I have never used an air squeezer, so my only powered squeezer that I have any familiarity with is the pneumatics squeezer. Having a set of shims to go between that center compression pin and your dies is definitely essential. I bought a, a little assortment that varies from 1 16th an inch to 1 64th. I have not had to break out the uh, 1 64th shims. I've been okay with just the 1 16th and 1 32nds. And that was part of the problem that I was experiencing, but it was being amplified by the original Flexilla airline hose that I was using. 
you need to have the, the throw on the pneumatic squeezer set fairly close to the optimal position. And so those shims become essential as the only two compression pins that are provided in the kit are uh, roughly a quarter inch difference in terms of length on them. So having that shim kit is absolutely necessary. So if you're looking at a pneumatics, uh, hand, uh, pneumatic squeezer and you don't already have a shim kit, make sure you pick one up as well as you will need that for quality riveting. Now that I'm getting a little bit more stick time, if you will, on the squeezer, I'm starting to learn how all the variables interact with each other to give you the ultimate result of how it's riveting. And uh, I'm playing around a little bit right now with where to have the regulator at the compressor set versus the regulator that I have right next to the pneumatic squeezer itself. Um, I'd added in that second regulator when I was trying to troubleshoot what was causing the issues I was experiencing. So now I just kind of find the, the balance between those two. The compressor that I have is not very large. It's only a five gallon, two horse compressor, but it's sufficient for the, the riveting using the hand squeezer. So I, I don't intend at this point at least to continue or to purchase a large air compressor. I'll keep using the, the one that I already have and just find that balance between the, the two regulators. And now we're moving on to attaching the hinge brackets to the rear spar assembly. Process is very much the same as that on the vertical stabilizer, just quite a few more of them, at least twice as many. You do have to adjust the shims on the pneumatic squeezer, but I did not have to change the compression pin. I've very much been enjoying some of the conversations I've been having with you guys in the comments section, so make sure you uh, leave a comment below if you've got one or a suggestion. Uh, I'm a little curious, for those of you that are following along on the project, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know if you're currently considering a build of your own or if you're already in process of a build, whether it be a, a Vans or any other type of aircraft. It's really honestly a, a great community and it's part of what I'm really enjoying about the aviation community is all the wonderful conversations that I get to have. Learned so much from the <clears throat> previous knowledge that other people have already gained. It's been fantastic. And now we're moving on to the front spar assembly. <clears throat> a few more components that go into this one thanks to the service bulletin that occurred in the past. This definitely was the most challenging assembly to date. Uh, keep in mind that I did start off with the vertical stabilizer and I have not done the elevators or rudders yet, depending upon when you started following along with my build process. Again, there are a few holes that you need to keep track of here on the front spar assembly that you will not be riveting at this stage. Namely, uh, for me, the inboard rib attach points those are fairly obvious though since they are 3 seconds versus 1 8 rivets. There are a couple of different size or types of rivets, though those are uh, fairly self-explanatory. You obviously use longer rivets where you have the reinforcement angles, and then there are some flush head rivets which are obvious from the dimples that sit in the countersinks. I'd say the most challenging part of the riveting here on the front spar assembly has got to be how tight some of this is. There's uh, quite a few rivets in a very relatively small location here. So I found myself uh, occasionally fighting a Coleco and uh, obviously struggling, struggling with visibility uh, on a number of occasions as you can clearly see by my head going almost upside down. Uh, so you just got to move some of those Clecos back and forth as you go through. I've been trying to leave as many Clecos as possible. Uh, the rationale in my mind is to keep as even a, of a force applied to all the pieces during the riveting process. Let me know uh, how many rivet holes you normally skip and how that has worked out for you. Here I am uh, moving Clecos around getting ready for the, the next rivets. I left in the Clecos for all of the rivets that only go between the doublers and the spars since those are a different length. It's kind of my way to remind myself that I needed a different length rivet there. One item that I did notice that was changing the 
variability of the quality of my riveting was that a few of the holes that I had match drilled it doesn't seem that I had done a perfect job of keeping that hole perpendicular to the face of the components and so the rivet would be on just a slight angle and of course you know that throws you off a little bit when you're riveting so I'm gonna make sure to take a little bit better care of always keeping my drill perpendicular and at least two axes to to the part so that I'm not having to fight that uh, in the future but they turned out okay and they all passed you obviously see me occasionally pulling out the the rivet gauge just to double check on a few that didn't quite look right but ended up, ended up being okay All right guys, so that's as far as I can go on the front spar assembly for the horizontal stabilizer. The next step is to attach uh, HS5 and 6 to the front assembly, which I'm going to hold off on. It's not because I couldn't do it with the squeezer, but because I want to keep this piece easy to store and I don't want to risk damage to those inboard ribs. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to transition to either the rudder or the elevator. Leave a comment below of what you think that I should go to next since I can't attach skins yet since I'm still waiting on that rivet gun. Where we're at right now is 45 hours of build time, 53 hours of total project time, and another 23 hours of video editing. So we're moving along. I'm very much enjoying this process. And if you're enjoying my videos, go ahead and hit that like button for me. If you want to continue to follow along, subscribe, and make sure you click that bell to get alerts. And as always, if you've got questions or comments, leave them below and I'll get to them. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Take care.